this is a great opportunity for all of us to be here and to waste our time to come and spend some, some time in this secluded environment where we are away from the hustle and the bustle of the city. We get together, assemble, and come with some objective and a vision. Each time has its thing. That at the end of the day, you want to achieve that. The topic that I have been given, that uh, the Minister of Islam, Minister of Islam, how to present Islam into this Western society. It is very important for all of us to know and to realize that uh, people, they look at us as a Muslim, whatever we do, whatever we project, whatever we say, it is taken as something that coming as a Muslim and something that proves our identity. Whether we are doing the right thing, whether we are saying the right thing or not. People generalize, generalize our behavior, our words, our lifestyle. It is very important to note here that whatever we do, we make sure that our behavior, our action, our, our words does not give a wrong picture about Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us in this country, in this community, people are coming from different walks of life, they are coming from different backgrounds, different culture, different language. What was very prestigious in your culture may not be very important for other culture. While understand, while we understand this uh, uh, coexistence, this tolerance, whether it is a culture, culture, whether it's the language, whether it is uh, the different the uh, uh, or view that people they have, they based on their tradition, on their lifestyle, on the culture they come from. The most important thing for for us here that remains always unified, that is the Sahara of Islam. That never changed. That's why when we do, say for example, one of the most, most important part that we do here, that the marriage, maybe the tradition, the culture varies from country to country, from tribe to tribe, from region to region. But the religious aspect of it, that remains the same. Where are Muslim go? Because that doesn't change. Because that is proven by the Quran, that is proven by the Sunnah of Rasulullah So that the religious aspect of it always remains the same. So it is very important for us that when we do anything as a matter of religion, it should be based on the Quran and on the Sunnah of Rasulullah I have recited the very popular ayah from the Quran that the only model for us is the lifestyle of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We need to look at that uh, who is our model, what we take as a model. When, I, when we are living in this community, in this country, in this society, we are very much carried away and are manipulated with the factor that we see and observe in this environment. We need to ask our own children, our own youth, who is your ideal? I will be very happy to hear if somebody says my ideal is Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Umar, Mus'ab ibn Umayr. People, they have their ideals, whatever interest they have, the sport, showbiz personalities, other things, Maradona, this donor, this cricket, they are very different people. That is the idea they want to be like. I always teach the youth and I ask them, who is your idea? If he's a rugby player, he will say this. If he's a cricket player, he will say this. If he's something else, like this. But it's very hard to find somebody who can say that my ideal 
is Abdullah ibn Abbas, Musa ibn Umair, Abdullah ibn Umair, because we are not exposed to these things. It is very important for us that we look, first of all, the life history of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We look the youth around the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was not a prophet just to the adults. He was a prophet to all the, to, to, to all the, to, to all the society. People coming from different backgrounds, from different walks of life, from different conditions, from different levels, different extent. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is not only interacting with the adults, with the elderly people, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very kind to the children. He was very interacting with them. He used to, uh, he used to deal with them, and he used to interact with them, and he used to spend time with them. You see Musa ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala, a great personality in the history of Islam. The first ambassador of Islam who has been appointed by Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a safir to Madinah al a, man, a, a, a handsome young boy, when he is walking in Mecca, all the youth, when they look at him, they wish if I could belong to him. Because the, the, the luxury uh, that he was uh, uh, living and the, the amount of money and of wealth that uh, his parents, they were pouring on him, and the dress that he was wearing, it was all very envious to the, to the youth. When Musa ibn Umayr, when he walks from any alley, that alley used to stay for a long time. People could perceive that Musa ibn Umayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu is passed away from this. This Musa ibn Umayr is such a youth. He is coming to the uh, assembly and the majlis of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam listening to what Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has to say. And with the passage of time, the the talk of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is Islam. And finally he accepted the Islam. When the parents, they did not believe in this message. And he quietly coming and infecting Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The moment the parents knew, they warned him. They said, look, either you leave it, otherwise we will cut off from you. But Musa ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala, he understood the message. He was a youth. He was at your age, younger than you, okay? but because that message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam penetrated deep into his heart and he understood the authenticity of it, the fact of it, and he admired that in that age when he was enjoying his life. At this age when all of us, all of you, at your age, when you want to have this Nike, this uh, uh, this brand, that brand, you want to wear this, when you want to uh, wear that. Musa ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala in that age, he has all those things that he could wish and want it at that stage, at, at that uh, <coughs> state, and at that environment. He had all these things. But he preferred the mission of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the lifestyle of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for all this life. And finally the time came, the same Musa ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who used to be admired by the youth, who used to be envious in the sight of youth, you know? the same Musa ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he started living a very uh, miserable life, a, a, a life that, uh, that, uh, that there's a very, uh, very limited means of, of, of life, uh, of this world, but his heart was very rich. He was full of love. Now the thawr, the wealth that he has got now, it is much important, much more prestige, much more valuable than this monetary thing. This Musa ibn Umar ta'ala who came into the assembly of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and who trained in, 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 in his training came. And after that, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa appointed him as a da'i, as an ambassador in Madinah al -Mulawah where the Muslim community is growing and the people need it, a mu'allim, a da'i, a young da'i, is going to the of Allah. Musa ibn Umar, we need the whole day to talk about. We need to talk about his life, and you will see that every aspect of his life, you find there is a great example for the youth. This Musa ibn Umar, that when he passed away in Medina al-Munawwah, 
when the time of burial came, he did not he did not have enough material to cover his body. He has only one clock, one sheet, you know. And uh, it's such a short, if they cover the feet, then the head gets exposed. When they cover the head, the feet gets exposed. Prophet said, cover the head and uh, put some grass from Yudhukir. Okay? And in this uh, situation, Musa'ala ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala was born. But I'm going to ask you the question, what Musa ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala lose when he preferred Islam, when he accepted Islam? Musa ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala did not lose anything. He only won. You see, after 14 centuries, people, they remember the name of Musa ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala who did not cause as much of the lesson of this world. He who went from this world in such a humble uh, situation, but whatever assembly comes, whatever narrative comes, whatever majlis comes, when the Musa ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala is mentioned that he strikes the heart of thousands and millions and, 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 and millions of people. And that gives a great admonition for all the people get to come until the day of the Jew. So what we to say that we are living in this community, in this society, we should always be proud of our beautiful Muslim. That is the most important, that is the best thing to happen to anybody. You see this soka, this training, this that, these are all just a sign of things. Many of the things that we see that may not be very important, but the most important thing is I'm a Muslim and I'm proud of being a Muslim. I will live my life in accordance with the teachings of Islam. So, first of all, I will be honored in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I'm accepted by Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place my acceptance on this earth. And the people of the earth, they will be forced to respect me. This is the effect, this is the result of being a true Muslim. And this way you can be presented to Islam and you can be considered as the Safir and a messenger of Islam. May Allah send the guide soul to the right path and give us coffee to the right thing. Okay, at this point in time, inshallah, we'll start the workshop. So I can, if I can kindly please ask all the teams to get in their groups. Because you need to get in your groups in order to carry out the workshop. So, I'll just give you one minute to symbolize and give you a number of Blue.